Hey, so everyone loves to talk about the Apple ecosystem and how amazing it is, me included. But there's another side to it that just gets left out, cut out from the conversation. Yeah, that's what I want to take up in this video. The cons of being in the ecosystem. Okay, I remember what really drew me to the Apple ecosystem years ago is this term that Apple used like a lot it just works and the truth is it does but not all of the time like you have these amazing features like continuity universal copy paste airdrop and airplay that makes everything better together but it's not perfect all the time like take airplay for example it lets you mirror your phone on to a tv and this is something that i use almost every day when i work out and i cannot tell you how many times i have to deal with the spinning wheel and wait around for it to just work. It happens like almost half the time. So AirPlay works, but not all of the time. And AirDrop is another one. It's an easy, incredibly fast way to transfer files between your devices. But sometimes, just sometimes, it refuses to work. But thankfully, it's a lot less frequent than the AirPlay issue, but still. Again, it just works, but not all of the times. And what's actually worse is because everything's just so simplified, it becomes difficult to find out what's actually causing the problem. Like why is it not showing up? Yeah, like when I switched phones, iMessage on my new phone just wouldn't turn on. I tried everything with Apple support and my carrier. So it's like there's literally nothing you can do to fix something if it breaks. So here's the thing, it just works, but when it doesn't, it does not. Okay, that was all the software hiccups, but there's another thing that has become more obvious and I cannot believe I'm saying this, but iPhones kind of look outdated next to a Galaxy. And it's not only the iPhone, except maybe for the iPad. Every Apple product currently on the market looks somewhat dated to the competition. Like foldables are a real thing now, but it would take Apple years before they are testing and refining the experience and before they can make them at scale like millions of them. So it's kind of a bummer to wait it out. But yeah, what I want to say is that the hardware design is kind of dated compared to the competition. And then there's the economics of it all. Like pricing with Apple is kind of up there and out of reach for a lot of people. And it's kind of become associated with this elitist group. Here's what Steve actually had to say about all this. I have a question actually about market share, which is sort of what we're getting at. There has been a suggestion that because of pricing and design, Apple tends to appeal to kind of a smaller elite rather than that sort of mass customer base. And so I guess once and for all, is it your goal to overtake the PC in market share? Uh, you know, I can tell you what our goal is. Our goal is to make the best personal computers in the world and to make products we are proud to sell and would recommend to our family and friends. And we want to do that at the lowest prices we can. But I have to tell you, there's some stuff in our industry that we wouldn't be proud to ship, that we wouldn't be proud to recommend to our family and friends. And we can't do it. We just can't ship junk. So I can actually agree that it's not grossly overpriced, but it's only valid for when you can actually find something similar. Like you can get a good laptop for half the price of a MacBook. And yes, it's not going to be on par with it in terms of battery or power, but it can do what most people need to do on their computer. So it's like, if you don't want to spring for the best, something that Apple sees fit to ship, you've got no options in the ecosystem. And that's fine, really. They don't have to. But then Apple goes the extra mile to make sure that the experience with those other products is far from seamless. And that's actually the next con. But if you want that ecosystem magic, everything working seamlessly together, you have to spring for the best and get the Apple's version. In other words, you're kind of forced to buy from Apple. Okay, AirDrop, like I talked about, is an incredibly fast way to transfer files between devices. But it only works on Apple. So if you want to share something with an Android or any other device that's not made by Apple, it's actually much more difficult if you don't do it over the internet. An Apple Watch pairs beautifully with the iPhone, but literally every other watch cannot have that functionality with an iPhone. Like you want a round watch, you're going to have to deal with the limitations because it's not from Apple. And AirPods also pair magically with the iPhone, but no other Bluetooth buds are allowed to have that. 
No, you have to go in settings. Like Fastware on Android works across different brands. So yeah, this inflexibility to work with other devices is what I consider to be a major con with the Apple ecosystem. And the final downside of being in the ecosystem is the brutal lock-in. Like too many things fall apart if you try and leave the ecosystem. All the passwords you've saved over the years are locked down with Apple. Your Apple Watch does not work with anything other than an iPhone. Your Apple Card is now not accessible if you're not an iPhone. No more blue bubbles. AirPods don't even auto pause now that they are connected to an Android. And all of this quickly deflates your interest in other products. Phones like the Galaxy and Pixel are cool, but you know it's gonna be a lot of work. Like it's a non-starter for me and I think many, many people. Switching from Android seems a little easy, but leaving the ecosystem is unthinkable for most people. Consequently, there's less incentive for Apple to keep up with the competition. So that was all for my rant with Apple. I still think there are more positives to being in the ecosystem, at least for me right now. Let me know what you think is the biggest downside of being in the Apple ecosystem down in the comments. Subscribe before you go watching another one and I'll see you in my next video.